I feel like in the past we spoke about, you know, will you hook up with someone on a first date? And my answer was always like, no, I, I'm not really someone mm -hmm. who hooks up on a first date. And I never really give an explanation to why. So I thought this episode would be great to kind of, right. you know, talk about that. And I think, you know, it goes back to when you're sleeping with someone, you're sharing energies and souls. And for me, that's like huge. And I have this thing and I don't know if I'm the only girl who feels this way, but I feel like. I don't ever feel good if like a guy got me too easy and didn't have to work for mm -hmm. it. And I feel guilty for allowing someone to get me that soon on without actually knowing how special I am. Right. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that it's necessarily right. Chemical X. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Chemical X podcast. It's your girl, Veronica. And your other girl, Lesia. And as you know, guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave us a comment down below, and leave us five stars on Apple Podcast. <laughs> oh, well, I'm a Powerpuff girl. I'm as Powerpuff girls as it gets today. Holy. Anytime you wear sleeves or gloves, it just feels like, where are you going? Where are you going, babe? <laughs> Yeah. Going, it's either you're going to Halloween or you're going to a gala. And today I think it's Halloween. It's definitely Halloween. Alessia pulls this out. And I'm like, Ale, you could have told me I had a Halloween costume ready to go. <laughs> Fuck. Are you kidding me? It's perfect. It's amazing. I always wanted to be the pink Power Ranger. Wait, when we started this podcast, I was the blue Powerpuff Girl and you were the pink. No, so you're I just was, in character. I'm not. You were the green. I was the blue. Oh, wait, I was green. Yeah. Wasn't I blue? No, you were green and I was blue. No, you were paying. I'm telling you. You're like, I did the marketing. I'll fucking go fucking search it right now, actually. You I were might pink. Be I might be wrong, honestly. I'm telling you, you were pink. I was blue. I was pink. You were blue. Exactly. Well, you on live television. You're right. Oh, oh yeah. I hate this podcast. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's Veronica see. walked in before. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just said I'm sorry. So listen up. Wait, Wait what, what did you time? say? I said, I'm sorry, Alessia. You I couldn't right. hear you. What did you say? I'm sorry, Alessia. You were right. I was what? It's the last time I say that. <laughs> Guys. Show me. We've come such a long way. But you actually look like that pig right now. I look like this pig. <laughs> Zoom it in. <laughs> Guys, this is me right now. Oh my God. You could have told me I had my uniform. <laughs> well, where's mine? <laughs> I need the blue version of that. No, literally. Maybe every week we'll just show up with these suits. <laughs> <clears throat> so, guys, about... Uh, I would say like two months ago after we released our episode. I think it was actually longer than that. Was it? Yeah, maybe. Maybe like oh, what? No, two sorry, no, no, no. Two and a half months ago. I don't ago. know. You're in your correcting phase yeah. today. You were wrong once. You were, yeah. You were wrong once. I think I would just stay in your corner today. <laughs> you were wrong in the first two minutes. I think shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> like whatever I say, don't uh, degrade me. Actually, just off topic. I was uh, watching this reel on Instagram. They were showing this guy who was like, you know, they were showing like a a demonstration of a of a woman and a man being out together with mm -hmm. like friends. And they were showing how when a man is speaking and like the wife or the girlfriend that's beside is probably going like, that's not true. That's not what happened. Or like he's saying it wrong. Just shut the fuck up and let your man speak and don't interrupt him and like degrade him. Right. And I thought that was really funny. Like, no, that's not where we went. Just let him have it right just don't even correct him i'm definitely a corrector but in time yeah. i've learned to not be yeah because are you i feel like you're a corrector too no not really no. i think it depends who i'm with you know also if it's joking and they could take it then yeah but if it's somebody that i but can, it's because they feel kind of ashamed because you're yeah. like embarrassing them in front of like people yeah i don't even think it's an embarrassing thing i think it's just like a, res um, a respect thing it's like uh, there's a, there's a word for it, but I can't think of what it is. Yeah. It's just more of like a you're degrading him kind of. Exactly. And like men don't like that. Yeah. Well, so stop doing that. So stop interrupting <laughs> when they say the story wrong. But speaking of degrading. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good transition. Very good transition, guys. You know, we love to degrade here on the Chemical X podcast. Uh, <sighs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Just men. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so I would say about two and a half months ago. You're like two. <clears throat> two and a half months ago. We had done an episode and talking about pay pigs. Um, 
based on like our experiences the crazy dms we were getting and once we had released that episode guys i never knew there was so many pay pigs in this universe i did not know that that many people existed i actually didn't think that you know all seven billion people in this world they're all pay pigs i didn't know that every my brother's a pay pig like i didn't know that i have to start worrying about family members being pay pigs (laughs) tell me you know what i mean i know what you mean because everyone's i didn't i didn't know there was such a large community one person wrote to me okay and they were uh, i guess a pay pig but they didn't want to send me money because they were like you know my sister and like i don't want this getting out and i was like no what are you talking about like i don't see your name on pay on paypal you can like hide that you're like i'll close my eyes just send 250 i said trust me i'm not telling your sister <laughs> yeah it's shit for both of us babe <laughs> send send <laughs> he didn't so, send he didn't send so uh, basically what happened after we posted that because we had posted a, a tiktok and it kind of went a little bit viral and then also with YouTube shorts, yeah. it went viral. <laughs> so a lot of people, um, I guess pay pigs, had seen us talking about pay pigs and they said, these bitches are, you know, ready and up for it. So naturally, they found ourse- themselves in our DMs. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just got loaded, flooded yeah. with messages of people saying, like, send me money. I want to send you money. Like, I want you to, you know, take control over my bank account. And, um, you know, then we would get some people that were really interested in alessia and i like together like, like the chemical eggs duo and sometimes when you're doing it together it's like you know what i mean it's like babe we got this if you don't say it i won't <laughs> do you know what i mean and like, also like, like the anxiety of doing it with someone it's like it's as bad it's like we're in it together we're in it together and it's like if i go down you go down with me bitch yeah just you know? not in the elevator <laughs> um So basically, we had a couple of people reach out to the both of us. Anyways, long story short, there's this one guy who's literally begging us to send us money. Yeah. Which is such a funny sentence to say, begging us to send us money. Anyways. um, And he was harassing us, harassing us, harassing us. He was what? (laughs) Harassing us. Wait. (laughs) Harassing us. And uh, I think at this point, he had been like, what's your Snapchat? So we were writing to him on like Snapchat. Yeah. Um, and he was like, you know, I want you to degrade me. Like, I want to be on my knees. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. Veronica's like, well, I'm not doing this on my regular Snapchat. <laughs> so I did my normal Snapchat. I didn't give a fuck. At this point, I was like, I don't care. Oh, this is the funniest thing. This is the funniest, thing. Thing. Is the funniest part. <laughs> Guys, I... <laughs> this is the funniest thing that ever happened to me in my life i can't believe we never i can't believe this. i forgot to say this so yeah so he moves us to snapchat now you know what i mean so i'm like whatever fuck i don't even use snapchat um but we use it for our podcast so yeah. we had it yeah so um he's like let's talk on snapchat whatever and we're like oh this is annoying so anyway so but at this point i'm like i don't want to use my snapchat you know like just in case whatever i don't trust suddenly i'm the one who's not trusting so i'm like i get it though i'm like let me make an account, a separate Snapchat account with like a different. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you always think you're ahead, but you're actually you're, like, you're behind. You're <laughs> way behind. Just use your regular Snapchat, babe. So I make <laughs> I make a new Snapchat, and I go. I'm just gonna put like a similar. Like I, I think I had put like Valerie, or you know, like like it's not it's not not me. But it's not necessarily me, you know, like if it ever comes back. I think to that's me. really smart, though, because if you start doing like something that's so far off, yeah. it's like, OK, like Clementine, like you, what? Like we're like, going to still know like that I, Veronica's Valerie, you know, but also like why would Veronica use Valerie? 100 yeah, percent. Sketch, sketch all over the, the place. So I think I'm slick. I'm like, let me just, you know, protect my I don't know where this is going. I don't know what's up. Like, obviously, we're not into this. So like we have no idea. So I'm like, let yeah. me just make a new Snapchat. So like I said, I made it under a different name. <laughs> And when you make a Snapchat, you have to put in your phone number to start the Snapchat. So I'm like, no problem. I put in my phone number. I make a new account. Okay. Because my email was anyways. So I make this account and I click do not notify your friends. Perfect. We're good. Okay. So now I add, uh, we go into like this group chat, whatever. It's literally a group chat between the PayPick and me and Veronica. It's my only contact on Snapchat. Okay. (laughs) And then all of a sudden I start getting blank added you as a friend and then i go hold on a minute and this is guys somebody that i know that yeah. i know yeah so i'm like Whoa. and guys they're seeing valerie oh they're seeing valerie but okay. veronica is a phone contact like do you know how embarrassing then i'm like what the fuck then i see one person adds me boom another one then i'm seeing what the fuck then i'm seeing from contact <laughs> now all these people guys i had the account five minutes all these people are adding me on snapchat from my phone contacts and they're seeing Ver- valerie <laughs> nothing says 
escortation <laughs> more than a Snapchat with a different name, but it's showing up under your contact. I was like, guys, Veronica was Lord. like literally on the floor. Guys, the I'm on the floor crying because now I'm like, what I'm doing is not even bad, but now it's seeming. <laughs> now but it's now, like, what are you doing? Now it's like, well, that's that's OnlyFans. Whatever it is, it's it's way worse <laughs> than what the fuck I'm doing. But like my name on Snapchat is like, it's such a random name that yeah. it's it's mine. It's but yours. it's not even my full name. Exactly. So I already started with a Valerie kind of name. <laughs> but it's worse what I did because they're saying Veronica and they're saying Valerie. And then at yeah. this point, what do I do? I go and change my name to Veronica. So my identity is poof, it's out the window. It's out. It's out. It's there now. <laughs> but then it's even more sketch because they're like, why did it say Valerie before? And also we have her on Snap. Like, like why do we have two? F- exactly. And then I'm panicking. I'm trying to change the feature. How the fuck did this happen? Because I clearly <laughs> click. Don't notify my contacts. Anyways, guys, I don't know. I I. If you saw me as new contact on Snapchat and their Valerie, I don't know what to tell you. Look, I'm not an escort. <laughs> the pay pig said he would pay. He didn't say there would have come up problems. <laughs> well, I created those problems for myself. Absolutely. So we finished the podcast and now we're like, okay, well, it's time to make a couple bucks. <laughs> so, no, so Veronica, wait. the show is not done just yet. We're already like, it, guys, you have to understand. We're already makeup done. We're in the set. The guy is... Because what he wanted us to do is he wanted to pay us to go on FaceTime. He was like, I'm going to send you money and like, just, I just want you to come on FaceTime. I just want you to come on FaceTime. Wait, while we're, while we're filming. No, no. He just wanted us both on FaceTime and he just wanted to video chat him. Okay. Okay, What he told me though, is that he would give us $500 each if we would just mention his name and talk about him and humiliate him on the podcast. And how dumb are we now to be doing this? (laughs) We're doing it for free. I think we should message him and tell us he needs to give us money. Hey, Valerie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but what he really wanted is a video chat and we were like brushing off because we're like i don't fucking want to do this yeah fuck. like we didn't care but then we were together and you know your girlies they hype you up so we're like let's fucking do this yeah so we end up going kate send us money now we're gonna video chat you okay yeah i don't remember how much he sent us i think but- he sent us like 250 each he sent like 100 at the beginning and then Spot a little on. more afterwards yeah so we facetime him guys <laughs> Well, this is the funniest thing. This is so funny. It's because I'm someone that it's like, <laughs> I'm all talk. But when it comes down to it, I'm very like, <laughs> like, it's so hard to be like, shut up. Yeah. Send no, no. it. Veronica, you don't know how funny it was. So I take it. I start. But like, it's also like we're holding the phone yeah. like together. Get on your knees. I don't hear you oinking. And he's all guys. Guys, he's oinking. <laughs> Please do the invitation. He's in the camera doing this. <laughs> and we're laughing guys but we, we're dying we're dying laughing we're and dying he's laughing. loving it he's obviously loving it. because they want to be humiliated yeah. so like the more we're laughing the more he's like you know happy and he's not on guys he's not on screen or anything so we're just like fucking and i mean listen telling off someone is comes easy and naturally to me so i had no problem being like shut the fuck up like yeah, i'm there like the sidekick in the back yeah yeah you know <laughs> what i mean <laughs> yeah you better <laughs> That, that was actually you. <laughs> and then you take it and you go, you're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica was crying. Guys, this was the time of his life. I want you to know for three weeks after you didn't stop harassing us. Oh, begging, 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 God. begging, begging. And then I was like, I don't see you on your knees. Put your FaceTime on and show us you on your knees. <laughs> he's there like, we don't even know who this guy looks like. We just see his knees on the floor. <laughs> and then he's whispering, guys. Wait, I don't remember that. You don't remember when he was whispering, whispering, and we're saying, what are you saying? What are you saying? Say it louder. And he's going, more. <laughs> what, do you remember? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember what he was saying, but we were like, because oh. he was loving. He was the... in heaven. I was like, if this is this what. This is my job. <laughs> if this is my job, guys, this is so easy. Guys, I'm not going to lie, though. We hung up and I went, what's life? No, no. What is this life? What is this life? Two minute phone call, video call. And then he said, I like you more or less in your meter. <laughs> I said, Veronica, fuck, you have to be meaner. (laughs) But it's crazy. Like, they really want you to be mean. Insane. It's hard, though, because when it's you, it's like you're in your mind. You're like, I'm being mean. But in reality, it's like that's what that person wants. But it's so hard to like trick your like to change your mind about like, I'm actually being mean, though. Yeah. (laughs) They love it. So, guys, if you ever want to take your aggression out, I guess I'll give you his number. (laughs) Hey, pig. (laughs) Anyway, so that happened. Are we dumb not to just mention his name to get five hundred dollars each? Well, I don't know what's going. on Do we on think here. we're billionaires that we don't need it? We don't need it. We'll sing. It's because what happens when we say we air it, and he goes, "Well, bitch, you already did it for free, so I'm not sending you the money." 
Yeah. He also wanted us to just FaceTime him once while we were on. If you guys wanted to, in another episode, if you want to hear the oink, we'll, uh, we'll call the him oink, through. The oink was the funniest thing I heard. All he life. wants is to be mentioned on this podcast. This po- him listening to this, he's he has no price. He's willing to give us anything. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like you said, you were the meaner one. <laughs> well, I know you're such in a good mood uh, these days. You de stress. She goes, you're a fucking loser. Nothing. It's because she shows up. She's having a great time. She doesn't even drink coffee anymore. She doesn't need it. <laughs> well, why do I need to? You wake up, you tell them off, and they're good to go for the day. Like, I'm going to be so good in a relationship. I will be like so calm and collected. As long as you have your little piggies. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, so that was our experience, and we thought it was the funniest. It was just one of those things where you go, where am I in this life? No, you just think like, what is life? What is life? Where am I? How did I get here? Um, Because, you know, a lot of people think normally that you need to like you know send naked pictures you got to do all this in order to get you like you always think like this can't be a thing because it just seems so easy yeah but then it is a thing and people love this and it's like i have to understand like mentally what happened in the childhood i just i would be what do you think it is i think it's just a control thing i think it's just like giving i don't i i really i don't know but it's something i mean it's like anything that turns you on you know you can't explain why it just does yeah they just like to be belittled belittled and taken advantage of and like but it has to to. do with something i don't know i mean it definitely it has to do with something i don't know what it is but we're gonna get uh we're gonna get a fucking pay pig on the podcast that would be the wildest episode oh my god well 100% 100% and they better be paying us to do it fuck what the fuck we never charged a guest to come on but let me tell you what we're charging <laughs> if any pay pigs are listening and they want to come on guys no stress eh? no stress we will start charging our clients <laughs> so guys speaking of video calls the funniest thing happened today and i thought it was so relatable so true honestly we agree <laughs> yeah. so Alessia had an interview that she was prepping for and um <laughs> It's just like when you have something stressful that you need to do, suddenly you start like, it's like when you're, when you're, yeah. when you're a waitress, guys, I don't know if anybody is a waitress, you start doing like, what's 15% of $10? Like, you know, it's 150, but like, yeah. you got to double check just to make sure that like, you're, you're not wrong in this yeah. time when it comes to money. So it's the same thing under like a stressful situation. You just start rechecking everything. Okay. <laughs> I was like, before the interview, I need to make sure that everything is in place. Yeah. Like, I don't want any fuck ups to happen. I need my notes on while I'm on Zoom. And I know that it's very easy to have notes on Zoom. <laughs> but I was like, Veronica, I'm starting a Zoom call. I need you to come on. Guys, she sends me a Zoom invite. <laughs> so now we're doing a fake Zoom just so she could make sure that she could see her notes at the same time of Zoom. That's anxiety. If I've ever seen anxiety. That is anxiety. That's anxiety. But that's anybody who's ever done an interview. I've done I've done Zoom how many times? How many times? How many times? <laughs> you are Zoom. I am. I literally, my name is Alessia Zoom Deandra. Is that your Snapchat name? <laughs> <laughs> Should be mine. Better than Valerie. <laughs> yeah, guys. Uh, it's tough. It's tough it, out there. It's tough out there. You really got to start making sure Zoom still it's works. It's because when you have anxiety, you think... Anything could go wrong. So let me try and perfect the one thing that you still have no control over once you start. 100%. It's crazy. Anyway, I'm not really an anxiety girl, but like stressful situations Mm -hmm. like that, I like to be well prepared. But it doesn't take away from the anxiety. I still have anxiety before starting. It's not like I did that with you and then I felt better. I was it was the same. Yeah. But but definitely like that's interviews though. You could stress forever. It's the yeah. idea that the unknown you don't have really control over. I still have that when we interview someone on the podcast. Even when somebody comes on, I have anxiety for days. Yeah. I can't sleep. Having people on the podcast, no matter how much we know them, there's this kind of because we know we can control what we say and yeah. and, and the dynamic and, and the kind of and I how know, it's gonna go. Yeah. I know what you're gonna say to a certain extent. But like some people are off off camera they're they're good but then you have to almost like fill in the gaps for them it's a mess it's stressful guys so it's if stressful. you wonder why we don't have many guests it's because uh we don't <laughs> like sleep. to have anxiety uh, often <laughs> listen if we're if a guest is paying us to come on no stress yeah so guys today actually what we wanted to talk about is um something that you know has been pretty big recently on tiktok i've been seeing a lot of people talking about it and just kind of like hookup culture in general Mm -hmm. and also like hooking up with people on the first date if you guys do that or not and also just like being attracted to people and kind of just like that 
one night stand vibe. Yeah. You know? So personally for me, and I think I've spoken about this in the past, but you know, if you don't know, here, here we are again. Um, and I know a lot of people say this, but I really find it true for myself. And I actually find it really hard or impossible actually to be attracted, to be sexually attracted to somebody mm -hmm. that I don't have a mental connection with. Yes. And the more strong our emotional connection gets, the more I'm attracted to you. But I need at least a mental connection. Like we, 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 we are able to talk together and we're able to like talk about certain things. Like that for me is what makes me attracted attracted to you yeah you can be the hottest you guy be the and hottest if you don't guy. have that i swear like sex is just like weird and not good but I, i'm just i i can't get turned on just by looks just by how hot you are you could be the hottest smoothest guy and i won't i physically can't I get physically turned on i will not get turned on i can't and especially if you can't like make me laugh and stuff that's like a whole other ball game but i mean it's just for me it's really important it's so the important connection. yeah so that's why in the past i've never been someone to have one night stands and stuff like that it's happened on a couple of occasions um and i would say it was more during the time where i was traveling uh, when i was living abroad because i was going you know i i was in a place where i didn't really know anyone so it's like hard to you know have that stability yeah. because you're just like leaving a city you know what i mean and yeah i think in those circumstances there were a few times where i did end up you know sleeping with people that yeah. i didn't really know and you know i guess like in those times it was whatever i was in a different mindset but it never felt that good like like yeah i had great times and the people that i had great times with were usually people i really connected with mm -hmm. but like to say that i had a one night stand where we didn't even talk before there was nothing like the the few maybe like one time actually or two times that i did that it was horrible for me. Yeah. Horrible. So I actually really wanted to talk about that because I feel like in the past we spoke about, you know, will you hook up with someone on a first date? And my answer was always like, no, I, I'm not really someone mm -hmm. who hooks up on a first date. And I never really give an explanation to why. So I thought this episode would be great to kind of, right. you know, talk about that. And I think, you know, it goes back to, when you're sleeping with someone, you're sharing energies and souls. And for me, that's like huge. And I have this thing and I don't know if I'm the only girl who feels this way, but I feel like I don't ever feel good if like a guy got me too easy and didn't have to work for mm -hmm. it. And I feel guilty for allowing someone to get me that soon on without actually knowing how special I am. Right. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that it's necessarily right. No, but like it's I how I feel. But it's how you feel, yeah. For me, it's like if a guy doesn't put in the extra work to actually see why I'm special, then I internally feel guilty mm -hmm. for allowing someone to, uh, I guess, to share to share souls with yeah. and energies. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not right it's i mean it's definitely I think, it's it's definitely allowed and you're absolutely allowed to yeah. think that way i just think it's also something that's like imposed on you to like for sure to feel like sex is this thing like and obviously i think there's two things right now i think there's the idea that like we're trying to change the narrative that like it's okay to sleep with whoever you want it's okay to have a high body count and it it's is okay to sleep fuck on the first date like all these things are okay but at the same time in that you know, that change of mindset that's happening right now in society. Mm -hmm. There's also the other side where we're kind of forgetting how important and how special sex is. Yeah. Because to push the narrative that you could do whatever you want, you kind of have to let go of the narrative that it actually is important and it is special. So basically, I find like to give up the idea that to, to kind of sell the idea that it doesn't matter that you hook up, you almost have to pretend like sex isn't that important, which to some people it isn't to, you know, like it is not that sacred thing that like, oh, you can only have sex after marriage and well, stuff look, like that. I'm not here to say like I've never had a one night stand because I have. And mm -hmm. that's why I feel like I can speak about yeah. it. It's that I've done both. And every time I've had a one night stand, I've never felt good. Good. Yeah. And it has I don't even think for me, it has nothing to do with I mean, look, it's hard to say, but I think sometimes it's like, yeah, you have a really good connection and, and they validate that and they make you feel special. So you don't feel as shit. 
but I think it still for me goes back to the fact of like a man didn't work hard enough and like win my heart enough mm -hmm. for him to see how special I am. Right. So like I think that men in a way see value and like see a woman as more special if they had to work for it a little bit more. Right. And I feel better about myself if I allow someone the the time to do that. Right. I just feel better. Yeah. I, 100%. I don't know. And I think as girls, we can be like really guarded and we're always worried about um, is he hooking up with me for the right reasons, right? Because it's like guys will be like, oh, well, she's hot. I'd hook up with her. But for a girl, it's like that shit gets old, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, she's hot. Like, we don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not a reason to be, you know, wanting to hook up with him. Like, yeah, it's nice. Thanks for the compliment. But for women, it's a lot more than that, you know? For sure. I mean, I think it also depends on the person. It's not so much a gender thing. I think yeah. for guys too, like, I think it could be vice versa. Like, sometimes girls can be that way and sometimes guys for can be sure. that way. But I just think, like, in general, we've somehow, like, in making it okay to sleep with whoever you want, we've lost the importance of sex. And I think, like, sex still really is important. Mm -hmm. And it is, like, that connection and that special thing. And at least for me personally, whenever I've, like hooked up with somebody and there hasn't been that like mental connection there like it's been like a not pleasurable experience and it did leave me feeling like shit after yeah. and just like not feeling good about myself and I think sometimes we're like pushed to do things because it's like yeah sleep with whoever you want and like yeah do whatever and then you do do it but then you realize you don't feel good and it's not bringing you like the satisfaction that it would if you would have a better connection with somebody yeah exactly you know? so I just think like in the world of like right now what's so popular is like that hookup mm -hmm. culture i think it's still okay to you know think that sex is special and it's still okay to like have your own boundaries and maybe not want to sleep with somebody on the first date yeah. maybe not want to sleep with somebody on the fucking 10th date like yeah it's still okay to like pr to like keep your body special and it doesn't mean that like you know you're any better than a person who sleeps with people on the first day like it's not about that it's just about yeah. doing what works for you exactly you know and going back to exactly that it's like you are sharing your energy and your soul when you're hooking up with someone. So if you don't want to, don't. And I think, you know, becoming older now, I'm really a lot better with this because have I hooked up with people in the past? Maybe because I felt a little bit, a little bit pressured. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Was yeah. I like 100 percent? I want to sleep with them. No, but I've done it because it's like, OK, well, I'll let like experience like you know, dating these days is different. You don't have to like, it's not always, you know, 10 dates and then you have to hook up with them, you know? But like, I don't know. Like, I feel like the older I'm I'm getting, the more I'm like, well, no, like I don't, I don't want to be like everyone else because that is hookup culture. Yeah. And that's exactly for me. Like if I think back to the times that I did, I was less like, you know, um, I guess like controlling over that yeah. stuff. That's not the right word, but whatever. I think when I cared less about it, you know, it was because I was doing this whole like, okay, well, you have to experience, you're experiencing life. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what people do. Like, it's okay to just hook up with people. And like, I had that mindset and I felt like, okay, I had to do these things to make sure I lived a quote unquote fulfilled yes. life. And, but in reality, every time I did do it, I didn't feel as good. Yeah. And like, don't get me wrong. There has been like times where I did hook up with somebody on the first date and we ended up dating and it ended up like all working yeah. out which is fine. It's whatever. But like for the most part, I just wouldn't do that anymore. I, I, being at the age that I am now and I don't judge anybody for what they do, but it's just yeah. like what I've realized about myself and what I've realized brings me happiness and peace. And like the uh, most like satisfaction is actually like getting to know somebody and like understanding who they are, because the reasons as to why I was doing things were wrong in the past. Like it's, I said, I was doing it for experience. I was doing it to like, I mean, I don't think the, I don't think it's wrong. I think it's just like you Different grow, you now. learn it's yeah. experience. And then you realize that First of all, the way to get a guy to date you is not through mm -hmm. opening up your legs and hooking up with them. No offense, girls. You're just one hole <laughs> in a million. That's not how you get someone to commit to you. Mm -hmm. It's just not. It's about, you know, connecting on an emotional level, physical. Yes. But like, I don't know. I think it's it's way more in depth than that. And I think a lot of the times me in the past too, I would think that the way to a guy's heart is, you know, by sleeping with them. And that's really just not it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not. I mean, it's definitely a thin line between like 
don't sleep with them too soon but then don't make them wait too long and it's just like this whole little game but the way that i see it is just like if the vibes are there then the vibes are there and like only you can know that yeah and only you can know yourself so you know we can even sit here right now and be like, yeah, I don't want to. But then, but then I meet my husband up, and I sleep with him on the first date. And it might all work out and, and you, the vibes were there. Yes. You know? I'm just talking from like in a general, in a general like experience yeah. way. For, for sure. sure. And I think that a lot of women and men could be listening to this going, you know, oh, well, it's just, you know, even a girl might be like, oh, well, it's just because you're not sexual, you know, that mm-hmm. you're just you can't just hook up with someone you just meet. And I think that's so wrong. Because um, I'm like absolutely super sexual, but I still, for me, it's like I'm I'm just going to masturbate if it's just not the person yeah. I feel like hooking up with because because it's mental. Yeah, and I and I agree. Yeah, I think like you don't. It's so hard because I feel like if you say one thing, then it makes it's like it I puts feel us like, in a box. But we could change our mind and we can. It, it's not even about that. It's just like I feel like if we sell this thing of like it's so important, just masturbate, da da da, then it kind of like takes away from the people who yeah. do like to sleep around casually. And like I don't want it to seem like that's not okay because it is. I think the really important part is your motive behind doing it. I think that for me is what's so important in like why you know, why are you sleeping with people? Is it because you actually truly enjoy it? It's because it's bringing physical pleasure and like, that's it? Then perfect, go ahead. And I can promise you though, the people that are fucking random girls every single day, if you think they have fulfillment in their life, I promise you they don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go against that. Like it's, it's, how could you? Yeah. How could you when you're sharing your energy and your soul with so many people, how much fulfillment can you have if you have to get it from like every, every single person has to be different? Yeah. I don't know. That's how I see it. For sure. I mean, yeah. Wait, if you can't, you know, guy yeah. or girl have a connection with somebody and like learn to. I think it's very I different. I think for us women, it's emotional. But I think even for men at some point, it is too. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's very physical for them too. And they can do a lot more than, I don't, don't want to say everyone, but I feel like men, we categorize them as more like, you know, they don't give a fuck. They'll just fuck. But I think women or men love to have an emotional connection i think it just makes sex better you yeah. communicate better i think everything about it is better for both of us i mean i think especially over time and you know coming out of a long-term relationship i don't have any desire to just have casual sex like yeah coming from a relationship where it's like obviously when you are in a relationship like there's you could have which is weird because people must think you know veronica recently got sing- single yeah so she must want to just like you know i'm sure fuck okay. so many people yeah but that's so- but that's literally not how it is yeah. and- guys as usual we are dressed by carte blanche shop and if you love our outfits today or in any of our other episodes then you know where to get them you just have to go to carteblancheshop.com and check out their consignment goods Mm -hmm. luxury goods um and contemporary brands that they have we have a discount code for you guys chemical x 25 at checkout to receive 25 percent off anything at carte blanche shop so you guys can get a designer bag obviously there are some restrictions from this promotion but for the most part happy shopping and if you're one of our male viewers and you also want to look good then you can head over to izotti.com and get yourself an italian made tailor made suit because although wedding season has passed you still want to get the girls and nothing gets a girl better than a fitted suit and with that being said Guys, you have a discount code of 20% off using Chemical X at checkout. You'll receive 20% off your first suit, your 45th suit. It's not how many suits you have. It's how well it fits. Like, it's so not... Like, and it's funny what you were saying. Like, you must not be a sexual person. Because I think from the from the standpoint, even sometimes I think myself, I go, oh my God, am I not no longer a sexual person? Why do I feel so yeah. unattracted to everybody? Why do I feel so, like this certain way but then i meet the right person and it's like a whole different story yeah. i'm like wow like i can't, you know what i mean like it's like yeah. a flip of a switch but yeah it's because it's the right person and my the connection is there and the energy is there yeah. whereas when i don't have that i'm really not and I'm i not think looking to hook up with people i don't even think about it and i think a lot of the times it's like we were saying a lot of women you know in general will think that if they give it up Mm -hmm. then they're gonna be able to like lock them down you know and it's like it's like your pussy is not that different than everyone else Mm -hmm. and like 
you can't just give them amazing sex and then they're just going to be like, oh, wow, I'm going to date that girl. Like, that's just not it. So that's where I really think that for men, too, it's emotional because yeah. you can give him the best sex ever and he just doesn't. Still might pick the next girl. He still might pick the next girl. I had wrote, I truly believe having a guy commit to you has almost never been the way you perform in a bedroom. Truthfully, your whole isn't that different from the next chick. No offense. <laughs> I was really in my thoughts when I was writing all this. Getting a guy to commit is how you make each other feel before getting intimate. Do you share the same values, hobbies? How do you connect spiritually, emotionally? What does someone bring into your life? Because normally if you are feeling all these feels, then it's reciprocated. And I think that's when I feel more comfortable being intimate because I feel safe. Yeah. I think a lot of times women need that emotional connection in order to kind of filter through to see like what kind of guy you are are you just gonna bounce after we fuck mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with being like oh i can perform good in the bedroom yeah because we all know men could still go on to the next women can still move on so i yeah. think at the end of the day what you said is true about how like sex is rarely 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 ever gonna be the reason why somebody is gonna lock you down i think for the most part it's all those things like where you align on values and man or woman like this guy could dick you down better than any other guy in your life but you're probably still not gonna date him if you guys don't share the same values or don't have a connection yeah. anywhere else like yeah we always say yeah sex is important sex is important but in the right relationship it's actually not that important it's a bonus for sure but like just and it because could be you're fixed. Yeah, just because you're amazing in bed doesn't mean I'm going to want to date you, yeah. you know? And like, that's what people don't realize is sometimes you feel like you need to sleep with someone in order to get them to like fall in love with you. Yeah. But it won't necessarily do that, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's really not like a band-aid or like a reason why anyone would actually get into a relationship with you. Yeah, and I think that's what can make a lot of people sad because then they start feeling like they're sharing so much of themselves by giving mm -hmm. it up to so many men. And then they're not getting the fulfillment they think they're getting because mm -hmm. they must think like, OK, well, maybe this will do it. And then it doesn't. And then they do it again and again and again. And then they find their, themselves in this space of feeling like they're unlovable. Right. So I think that's why what I said is so important of realizing the reasons why you're doing something like i remember somebody had shown me a video of like a girl who was saying like, yeah, I have like a body count of like 40 people, you know, and they were like, you know, what do you think about this? And I was like, personally for me, like, I don't care about body count. I don't think that body count says mm -hmm. anything about a person. My only concern with this video is the video of the girl. She looked maybe like 18 or 19. And I was like, at that age, you need to, you know, at that age, sex is super hyper important and super stigmatized. Everyone's talking mm -hmm. about it. You know what I mean? Like you have to work kind of to get to sleep with 40 people at that age. Okay. And my question is like, why do you have, a body count of 40 is it for you or is it because you're seeking validation from other people is it because you don't feel confident and you and, and it makes you feel better about yourself when you are sleeping with people what is the reason at the age of 18 to have a body count of 40 because i highly 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 doubt it's for your own personal pleasure and because you're having a good time i didn't want to say I, it but like yeah facts and i like, feel like it's for another reason i feel like at that age at 18 you're seeking validation from everyone else yeah so personally for me do i have a problem with a body count of 40 no at all who the fuck cares yeah but at your age at 18 there there chances are the reasons why you're doing it aren't for reasons that are actually true to you and aren't mm -hmm. reasons that are going to make you feel good again in the future mm -hmm. and i think as we grow older our reasons for having sex changes i think yeah. sex gets less important it gets easier it gets more common less stigmatized yeah. and we're a little more lenient with who we sleep with because of those reasons mm -hmm. but still it's important to like keep you know to like know who you are and to like know if something's making you feel good or not and yeah. not just to do it because it makes you it validates you and makes you feel good in that second because i'm gonna tell you the next day you're not gonna feel good mm -hmm. you know you're really not you're gonna feel like shit it's so true yeah and like that's why it's like i'm really the person that's like do whatever you want sleep with as many fucking people as you want but just know why you're doing it and if it's for the wrong reasons i guarantee that you won't feel good about it later mm -hmm. you know and like i've had times where i i slept with somebody like there was one time in particular that i hooked up with somebody and i was just doing it for like the idea of doing it like just to say that i did it mm -hmm. kind of thing and i never wanted to die more in my life than yeah. after that moment because i was like i just did something and just gave myself up to something that i didn't even want to do mm -hmm. just for like the idea for the experience to say that i did it and i hated myself for like a really long time yeah. i felt so 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 depressed about it and i was like i never want to do this again like yeah. i never want to hook up with somebody 
and you know it's not that important but for me it felt so important at the time and really like hurt me mm-hmm. you know and it made me feel like shit about myself for so long that i was yeah. like and likewise I and i think that's that's a lot of the a lot of the time too now where i'm like you know if i'm gonna travel to go see someone i never want that pressure of feeling like oh because i went to see you because you you got mm-hmm. my ticket like that's expected and i think that's where now i'm a little more like i don't want to go and i'm not saying that every time i go that's i i sleep with every guy yeah but I still don't want that like pressure, pressure. because I'm like, I want to work at my speed mm-hmm. and I'm not just ready to give it up for anything. And I think yeah. the older I get, I'm like actually proud of that. Yeah. I think especially, like I said, getting out of this relationship, a lot of people, when I would speak to them, they were like shocked to hear that I wasn't just like running and sleeping with people. But like, I think I've just learned so much and like, I'm not sexually deprived. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just yeah. like, I'm coming out of a relationship. I had sex whenever I wanted it when i wanted it you know like i don't need it i'm very happy without it but it's only gonna be i only want it when it's with somebody that's like important to me yeah and if i'm not getting that then i do not want it at all like i would rather not have sex and that's fine for me yeah you know what i mean you could be single but you have this great connection with someone and you know you share that intimacy then all is well like that's great i think the reasons for it being wrong are when you're not feeling like you actually want it and you're doing it for any other reason Mm -hmm. than the fact that you want it. And I think nowadays with hookup culture, it's so difficult to still have these ideas to still have these standards because of the fact that it's so easy to fuck in this day and age Mm -hmm. everyone does it tinder hinge whatever it's so much easier to just sleep around Mm -hmm. that it's like why would somebody wait around for you for five six dates or whatever you know whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable why would somebody wait around with you for you if they can just get it somewhere else easier you know and i think that's what makes it so much more difficult to date because There's like this discrepancy of like people that are just like down to fuck. But do you think that like when you want to date with someone, are you like, oh, wow, like if I don't give it up? Because the thing is, you only think like that and you're like, oh, my God, if I don't give it up, he's going to go get it elsewhere. You only think that way when you're like with the wrong person. Yeah on a date you know like if you're like oh my god like i better give it because if you're feeling like pressured and like oh my god i have to give it to him it's because you're emotionally not ready to give it and you're going against your beliefs yeah and i'll only sleep with you if i think to myself i'm ready to sleep with you i want to sleep with you and it has nothing to do with what you want you know i want this but i do think like in hookup culture right now it's so easy to fuck that people are kind of like they feel like they can't have their standards anymore to just like you know get to know somebody or like not sleep with them right away like it feels like you have to compete against all these people that are willing to just sleep with whoever yeah i get that and i can imagine how like people that are like dating like really really into dating it's a struggle you know to still have those things and as a guy it's so easy for you to just sleep around because now it's so much more accepted and there's a lot less value put on it Mm -hmm. that it's like why would i have to try and have a relationship with a girl you know if i could just go from the next girl to the next girl so i think right now like hookup culture has done like a lot of damage to dating it's done a lot of damage to like meeting somebody because you're just you're giving your you're you're having these intimate intimate connections with somebody you don't even know and you're losing the possibility to maybe actually have a connection with them because you hook up with them and then you never see them again you know Mm -hmm. so it's like there's so many less valuable do you think that if women if women would give it up less then more people would be kind of like falling in love like i think it's everything really it's like we put so much value on a guy for sleeping with girls so obviously what do they want to do they want to sleep with as many girls as they can and then now we're telling girls like it's okay you could sleep with whoever you want so then now all these people are just sleeping with each other and then there's no value left Mm-hmm. We don't value a guy because in the past, you know, it's like a guy had to like work to get you on a date. They had to be yeah. perfect. They had to do all this stuff. And so now a guy I doesn't even it. need to open a door for you. Yeah. And you'll, you know, I guess, I guess if any girl's listening and you're like a little bit like me where you like don't want to get up, I, I think that it's actually a bonus if that is going out in the world. And like a lot of people are doing that, then be the person who stands out and it's and is different. Mm-hmm. If, if that's how you feel, obviously, yeah. if you want to fuck, fuck. But I'm saying never think that because you feel a little bit different than everyone else that you should change who you are to adapt beca- yeah to adapt because the right person is going to be like who's going to love the fact that you were that different sheep in the mm-hmm. in the bunch 
And it might be a little bit harder at first, for sure. But like, and for it's dating, still, it's still possible, of course. Like, and when you do find that person, it's going to be because you stuck to your values. Exactly. And the person you're going to find is going to be somebody who shares those similar values yeah. with you. I think as women, we're also very nurturing and like we see the best in people very often mm-hmm. and we're willing to accept a lot of things and let things slide. <laughs> I trigger. I think even for me, I've been in this position a lot. I create this whole scenario where I'm like, life with this person would be amazing. Like I could just see it, you know, like I feel like we share the same values. I feel, I feel, I feel it's very personal Mm -hmm. without actually it being two sided, but it being more one sided. So I think a lot of the times me or women included, we kind of see the best in people. And that sometimes is a downfall because we get way more disappointed with someone, but it's not actually the person who's doing it to us. It's really us because you built because we built this whole like kind of, you know, fake reality, fake reality. And then we get disappointed, but it's us who's doing it to ourselves rather than the person that we're expecting them to be. That mm-hmm. is not actually, you know, doing what your fake reality is saying 100 percent. so so i think i think i've definitely done that in the past too where i'm like oh i'm talking to a guy like oh my god it'd be amazing and then i get disappointed you imagine your whole life with them but then it's like the guy never had any commitment to you he never had any like it was it was all Mm one-sided in a way and i think i'm very aware enough to know that and i think now dating it's really like what a guy will show me rather than what he'll tell me Mm -hmm. and like the actions he'll do and everything but i think it's so true that girls do that and like even myself included it's like like, i don't think men do that as much yeah i I don't really know but i would say it's very much a girl thing yeah in general like i know more girls do this just by experience and like knowing how girls think it's like you meet a guy and like you like how they are they take you on one day they do all this shit and then you just start jumping to conclusions about like how they're gonna be in the future yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. what your life is gonna look like and all this shit you just start fucking imagining what your life would be like married and like this is your husband now because they did this one nice thing for you you know and yeah you just jump to all these conclusions and then when they don't match up to that narrative that you wrote for them you're like disappointed and yeah. you're like mad that they're it's not like the it's also like being in the talking to. yeah it's like being in the talking stage too it's like You could be talking to a guy and he could disappear for 15 hours. I saw a meme that was like, he can disappear for 15 hours and you can't get mad at him. You have to be like, hey, what's up? How was your morning? Like, you have no right. And I think in that time is when women go, okay, this is going to go like this. And and as much as like us women do hold the power and we can create that and we have like the ability, Mm -hmm. we have the pussy power. But like, yeah. I mean, I think it's definitely you. I've tried to at least like stop making up these fake stories in my head of like how that's gonna happen and you know what i realized actually i was talking to this with somebody um the a breakup a long-term relationship breakup okay sorry a breakup from a situation ship like just like a situation you know is a lot harder to digest it's a lot harder to get over than a real long-term breakup yeah because you never went through the whole yeah but it's so true because i think about like obviously i've had uh, like two long-term break or three even long distance break. yeah anything that anything could have been could have been anything that was like almost there like guys I, I i had spoken about this in the past but it's like my situation ship that like i was like it was long distance it like never really happened it like never really worked out hurt me so much longer and affected me so much longer than like my breakup do you know because what i mean because your breakup wasn't a fake reality you were living it you were seeing the problems you were exactly. in it but when you never really it was that what if it's, it's that it's, you're living off of the fake perfect reality that you invented you never had the ability to see through what yeah. the problems would be it was always living in this fantasy land of what you thought the relationship was so in and reality, i guarantee you if you would have actually dated that person that you 100%. had you know a thing with yeah that you just imagine this whole other life with them it would never be what you are imagining it you to would be. never exactly and you would never be as hurt as you are now and i think yeah like, the reality is you're breaking up you're losing the reality that you built that false reality that's what you're breaking up with it's whereas so in true. a true breakup 
you've seen the trouble you've seen their flaws you've seen what they've done to you you've been through the pain you've been through the hardship Mm -hmm. enough to be like now i'm ready to move on you know and i think it's so much easier to move on from a real relationship because of those reasons because you actually have solid because you tried yeah you tried you You didn't actually try when you're when you're just talking to someone and you don't know you're living off of a fake reality so it's so true i always think about how that's why i think it's really important to like really see what someone actually does for you Mm -hmm. versus what you're willing to do Mm -hmm. when they're not even you know giving you anything yeah you know and i think that's why it goes back to like you know making excuses for people it's like no like if they wanted to they would and i think that that's the caption that always plays in the back of my head when i'm like disappointed about something or i wanted it to go a different way i'm like if they wanted to they would yeah and you want the person who would who would do it so and i think that too when i'm making a decision about doing something and it's like oh like for example it's like should i facetime him should i facetime him then i'm like you know what if he wanted to facetime me he would so like no stress i'll leave that in your hands you know what i mean like it's just a little thing but it's just that mindset of like you create this whole like you put it so much on yourself but then you're like there's a whole other person there like they can do exactly what they want to do if they want to and they will yeah trust me they will and i think sometimes not bringing yourself down but just reminding yourself of that like very often Mm -hmm. is like really good because then you kind of get better at it and then you kind of like move on a lot easier because you're kind of like programming your brain and something i started doing which kind of goes back to what you were saying but um in the past when i was younger i used to always do that thing where i would like imagine like our life together and like i'm a very like creative visual person so i'm very much so in my thoughts and when i think about things like i can create a whole fucking world for us you know what i mean i think a lot of people do that yeah for sure creative or not i'm just like i'm very much so a person where it's like i love to imagine you know and i can really create these like stories for myself and and all this stuff and I used to do that a lot. Like if I liked somebody, like I would just like think about every single way, like yeah. what our wedding, and I know it sounds crazy, but like I would think about everything and what our wedding was going to look like, what our kids were going to look like. I would think about it all. And, and now, it seems crazy, but it's, it's, it's just, I think a lot of people yeah. do that. And it's that. just me having a crush. Like I would think about all these things. I would think about, you know, everything about our relationship mm-hmm. and I would spend so long daydreaming. And now where, I, when I find myself daydreaming about somebody I always stop myself from getting into that fucking build a life area Mm -hmm. because I'm like, you know what? No, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to start imagining every single way it's going to happen because you know what? When I did do that, it never worked out. So now I'm just going to like leave it up to life when I'm going to daydream about. And then you just get disappointed if it doesn't work out. Exactly. So even when it's like, for example, um, I, and I've started doing this with a lot of things in my life, not just dating, but obviously it's relevant for dating right now but it's like let's say i'm going on a date okay i'm excited for the date i don't know where we're going now i start imagining okay he's gonna bring me to the, this restaurant and then this is gonna happen and then this is gonna happen and what are we gonna order i think about everything okay but now where i'm at now i don't even do that anymore because i'm like you know what if i start planning how the date is gonna go in my head then i'm gonna show up on that date and as soon as the, he picks the wrong restaurant and it's not the one i invented in my head i'm disappointed mm-hmm. so you know what i leave it at a blank slate i leave myself no room for disappointment because i'm just ready to take whatever is gonna happen no expectations no expectations <laughs> but it's just like i used to always find myself trying to control too much yeah how the situation was gonna go because i imagined it a certain way and now i just force myself not to think about it like when i think like oh i'm excited for a date i just think i'm excited for a date like what am i gonna wear and that's it whatever i could control that's what i get Mm -hmm. excited for everything else i just like let my mind wander and i don't try to build that narrative because i found so many times i would actually end up disappointed when i did that to myself Mm -hmm. and the same thing goes obviously i'm using the date as like a fucking i've done it so many times i've done it for relationships i've done it for jobs i've done it for trips i've done it for it's almost three years on the podcast think everybody knows i've done that and uh, we're here so yeah but it's so hard like you want to think okay it's gonna go this certain way and then it always ends up i swear guys every time you think about how something's gonna go curveball it's gonna go the completely opposite way you're not even gonna make it on the plane and i used to have this thing where i used to believe and this is an anxiety thing i used to believe that if i couldn't think about it and i couldn't visualize it then it wasn't gonna happen okay and i vividly remember when this changed okay because i used to have this thing like oh i can't imagine it so i know it's not gonna happen i even still do that a little bit now like when i can't visualize it for myself and i'll always remember i was going on this trip to barbados with my family 
and uh, we were having trouble with like the flights, like we were flying standby. And, and I was just like, oh, I can't visualize me in Barbado. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling we're not going. I have a feeling we're not going because I have a feeling we're not going to make it on the plane. I just can't visualize myself there. I can't picture the trees. I wasn't able to, to build the narrative for this trip, which I'm always able to do. Okay. So I was like, we're not going to make it. I know we're not going to make it. And then we ended up by fluke. Somehow somebody didn't get on the flight. Any, anyways, the, everything happened in our favor that we ended up getting the last four seats on the plane and we ended up in Barbados. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself like, fuck, this is the first time that I couldn't imagine it happening, but it did happen. And then I was like, maybe I should stop sticking to that rule of like, if I can't imagine it, then it's not going to happen because it I'm clearly putting that did. energy. It clearly did. And I'm putting the energy that like, oh, I can't imagine it. So it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, and I think that experience changed the way that I thought forever, because I always think back to that and think like, oh, well, it did happen that time. So like, maybe it mm -hmm. doesn't matter that I can't visualize it, yeah. you know, maybe I just need to like let life happen and like, it's, go it's with literally the that flow. you have to just go with the flow and let life happen and stop thinking so much about what's going to be and just allowing mm -hmm. things to work the way they work. So one thing that I really want to talk about, actually, and it fits perfectly with this is um, I had actually seen this video on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Um maybe what we could actually put pull it up because what she says is really good but basically she was talking about manifestation do you want to watch it actually no oh it's yeah you'll play just play it. a cl clip okay so pretend you're dating this guy and you guys have been together for a really long time and he knows all your preferences inside and out because he literally loves you so much that he pays attention to every single detail and like this guy treats you like a queen like he would literally go to the ends of the earth just to see you smile on top of that he always has your back and he's like super loyal so you know for a fact that this guy always has your best interest at heart now we're gonna pretend that you and this guy really want to get engaged now here's my question to you would you want to plan the proposal would you want to know exactly when and how this man is going to get down on one knee and ask you to be his wife now you're probably looking at me like that's the dumbest question ever obviously not okay obviously the answer is no but let's talk about why the best things in life are always the ones that take you by surprise. Because Literally. you have no expectations and you have no dead set plan on how it was going to unfold. Like, you know how it's always the most spontaneous plans that end up being the most fun? That's because you went into it with no plan. You were just like, cool, let's do this and see what comes of it. So if you struggle with obsessing over your manifestations, if you struggle with not knowing the when or the how, and you doubt because you don't know the when and the how, ask yourself the question of what I want to plan my own proposal. So anyways, she goes on to talk about that. But basically the whole analogy is to talk about manifestation. Mm -hmm. So basically, just in case you don't put the video. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. So basically what the girl on the TikTok was saying was that like how, you know, when you're dating a guy, you guys are really in love, whatever, you know each other super well. He knows you so well. He knows everything about you. And like you guys want to get engaged. You won't want to know when or how he's going to propose to you you just want it to be a surprise and you don't want to have any expectations you, Wait, you do you wouldn't, think that's everyone though but you wouldn't want to plan your own proposal i mean in a perfect no. world you don't want to plan your own proposal. no for sure but i still think that there are a lot of people who would want to know when the proposal is happening they want to plan sure. it but i don't know general, I, some people like that control but other people like for it to just happen but yes for the most part general, i don't want to plan my proposal. you're in love with somebody he knows everything about you you trust yeah. this guy with everything do you want to plan your own proposal no you want to be surprised yeah. it's it's this beautiful moment you want it to take you by surprise mm -hmm. you generally don't want to be the one to plan it so her her analogy is basically that and how it relates to manifestation so it's like sometimes we, we were manifesting things and we don't exactly know when or why or how it's going to happen we kind of have a vision of like what we want mm -hmm. but we don't know exactly what it is and we're not sure how we're gonna get there and then you start obsessing over like okay well i can't imagine exactly what my car is gonna be so how am i gonna get there you know like yeah you start panicking about these little things about your manifestation and you feel like they're not gonna come true because you're not sure how you're gonna get there or you're not sure like why this is gonna happen or when it's gonna mm -hmm. happen like you you can't figure out the nitty-gritty details but the reality is, is like the best things come by surprise, just like a proposal. Yeah. You know, it's going to happen just like with that guy. You know, you guys are going to get engaged, but you don't know when and you don't know how, but you know, it's going to happen. And that's enough for you to just let it like, let it glow with the flow. And like whenever it yeah. comes, you're ready for it, you know? And it's the same thing with manifestation. It's like, you don't need to know exactly when or how it's going to happen, but just the fact that you know that it's going to happen someday you just let it happen and you're going into it. No plan, no expectation. I think it's just like letting go of like the when and the how and yeah. more focusing on what it is you want. Agreed. You know, um, I think that's what's important. Mm -hmm. It's just like letting go of that, like trying so hard to control your manifestation. Yeah. I think that's like where her analogy comes from in the yeah. sense of like, you know, you're going to get engaged because right now you're in the position where you guys are talking about a proposal, whatever, you know, it's going to mm -hmm. happen. 
but you're just the when or the what the when or the how it's just like you have to let that out of your control yeah and i think like let's say for example for me you know i'm a huge manifester i love to like just imagine what things are going to be saying that out loud and being like oh well i will have that puts a lot of ease Mm -hmm. in knowing that you will have it in the future you might not have it now but you will just like relief and Mm -hmm. being like okay it's fine like it will happen when it's supposed to happen and just like validating and confirming to yourself i think is another really good uh way to kind of just like be less like anxious about things for sure and i'm that same way too as i do this thing a lot where like if i'll talk about going somewhere if i'll talk about a trip if i'll talk about anything i always say this thing of like oh i'm gonna do that when i'm a millionaire like we're gonna go there when i'm a millionaire and like that's something that i often say in conversation is how like i'm gonna do that when i'm a millionaire because in the back of my mind i've like accepted i'm gonna be a millionaire yeah and i'm gonna get there so like i'm not even saying it as a joke i'm straight up when if you if i ever say this to you it's because i truly believe that i'm gonna do that when i'm a millionaire yeah. you know what i mean and it's just you said it's it a drunk little, on your birthday so if that i said it drunk it, on my birthday <laughs> say drunk minds over thoughts <laughs> but it's just like it's one of those little things that i do to keep reminding myself that i'm gonna be where i want to be one day doesn't matter how it doesn't matter when but mm-hmm. i'm gonna be a millionaire and when i am a millionaire i'm gonna fucking go on my fucking yacht and travel you know yeah the mediterranean yeah but like it's just one of those things that you don't realize how far it goes by just verbalizing like i'm gonna do that when i'm a millionaire and just like expressing that out loud just like because you've accepted you've accepted that that's gonna happen and you've taken no as not an answer yeah so i think when you've accepted that you're gonna have something you can't get disappointed because you're not going to stop until you get it so that's when i think it really happens for people because you're you're just not i think not accepting certain things is really a good trait to have but I think it's also in the language of like, oh, I'm going to do that when I'm a millionaire is so much more easygoing than like, I can't wait till I'm a millionaire so I can do this. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like once you start doing that, then you're focusing too much on when and how it's going to happen. Yeah. You're trying to control too much the situation of like, I want it to happen ASAP so I can do this. Whereas like when you just like express like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have that or like mm-hmm. I can't wait to do this when I'm a millionaire. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like you're letting go more of like when or how that's going to happen. Well, you're and just, just more knowing, yeah. accepting that it will. Yeah. You're letting the universe know that that's what you want. That's what you're going for. But you're not trying to control it. So yeah. it will happen for you because you're you're allowing that to come into your life when you control things it's like the worst thing ever mm-hmm. it's like and it's so hard to tell someone not to control because it's, it's like too. you want that thing so badly you don't know how to let go of it because yeah. you want it so badly but, but it's- it's really hard and super anxiety like gives so much anxiety because Mm -hmm. you imagine this certain life for yourself at this certain age and you want this for this certain time and then it doesn't happen then you're disappointed and then you're even more obsessed with it because it didn't happen by the timeline you wanted it to so you're trying to force it to happen sooner and it's just like when you start worrying so much about when something is going to happen it's just like i saw this um i saw this post on instagram that said like each age bracket and how much you should have in your bank account and i was like wow like (laughs) the anxiety i just got from this post yeah in knowing that i'm not there and like wait is this where i'm supposed to be because everyone likes to put everyone in boxes and be like mm-hmm. you need to be here when you're here but it's like everyone blooms at different times everyone's kernels pop at a different time <laughs> and i thought and then i really had to trick my mind and be like okay like i'm that age but i'm not there but <laughs> when i get to that age i'll be far gone in that mm. like I, i'll have way more than that bracket in that bracket yeah so it's like it's about knowing that just because you don't have something at the moment doesn't mean that it lasts forever forever and it doesn't mean that you can't have it and more later exactly you know yeah so true yeah you always get into manifesting it's crazy how do we end up on the gold diggers like <laughs> i said our new podcast name <laughs> <laughs> anyways guys thank you so much for listening hopefully you guys got some insight some motivation and last thing i want to say is that a lot of the times veronica and i included in this will say so many things mm-hmm. and then absolutely change our mind on it i mean for me it's like i come on this podcast every week and i tell you guys what i'm thinking in that moment at that time and so often it changes my beliefs change and, and it's okay and sometimes i feel bad because i think oh i i had said that i believe this a while ago but now based on my experience i've changed my mind and yeah. that's okay and i think everything and i think everyone at- listening you've definitely had a time in your life where you were like i thought that and now i think mm-hmm. differently so just understand that just because we're two girls with a platform we are sharing our 
brain. So yeah. like something we said a year ago, two years ago might not be something that we agree with anymore. Yeah. But for the most part, we're great. And uh, you we're guys right. should like <laughs> and we're right. So uh, like, subscribe, comment down below and tell us why we're amazing. <laughs> See you next week.